Uh, this is the amplifier module out of a DynaVoice Definition SW10 subwoofer. Uh, DynaVoice is a Swedish import company. They make some uh, decent enough mid-range-ish speakers, which are kind of uh, price performance oriented ones. Uh, not going to go into the sound quality, but we do have a broken amp module on our hands. So uh, this thing... What were the symptoms? Uh, it was the customer complaint. It was uh, screeching and making noises and just uh, not really working properly. Uh, when I got it, uh, they someone had already had a hack at it. And they'd taken the uh, PCB out and made a big mess out of everything. Uh, so I fixed the mess, and uh, after that, I noticed that it actually had some of the uh, corrosive black gunk on this uh, uh, Class D amplifier IC module. Uh, the, the stuff you that uh, Dave at EV Block has been making a lot of fuss about uh, recently. Uh, so I clean that out, replace the caps, clean the corrosion under a microscope. Uh, this part should be good to go if the IC there is okay. I'm kind of uh, not entirely sure how well that's doing. Uh, uh, for, as far as the rest of the unit, it still doesn't work after doing that. That's why I attended uh, on this particular bench rather than the bench it started out at. So the diagnostics have done thus far, uh, pretty much everything seems okay. Uh, the power output transistors are okay, the relay is okay, uh, most of the stuff just around is okay, the big caps are okay. However, I just found uh, these guys, which I actually hadn't seen before. These guys right underneath the linear plus minus 12 volt regulators, these guys are bad. Uh, this guy is like 0.4 microfarads at 20 ohms. So, it's a pile of garbage, so I figured if we can just uh, replace those caps and get this thing working, uh, that's going to be an awesome quick video. So let's just get at it and get it replaced. Q soldering line. So if we take the magical ESR meter and measure the capacitor for, I think, the uh, negative 12 volt rail. Uh, Pro there. There's a 100 microfarad cap and it's... 0.4 microfarads, 18 ohms. So that's obviously destroyed. Uh, curiously, the other one uh, is 150, uh, 600 million. So it's in parallel with something else, but uh, that one doesn't seem to be as bad. Curious that just one has failed, uh, but uh, it could be that both have failed, but only one of them has another capacitor in parallel. So we're going to take it out, uh, measure them anyway, and hopefully end up with a working subwoofer. And there's a real close-up of the caps. These guys are probably our perps. It could be that uh, other small caps around the board have failed as well. Uh, the big rectifying caps are fine. Uh, as far as I know, uh, these two for the plus minus unregulated rail coming straight over the transformer. Uh, the transformer is putting it plus minus uh, 15 volts. It's uh, got uh, triple windings. One cent, well, dual windings actually. One center tap plus minus. Uh, 12 ish volts there. What's it say on the label? Uh, yeah, plus minus 14 volts coming out here and uh, 50 volts uh, single winding coming out there. So, this is a uh, curiously a single supply class D amplifier, much like uh, you'd find in one of those cheapo uh, eBay amplifiers. A uh, very simple, uh, it's sadly not built around a TPA module or something like that. Though. It's some weird oddity which costs 20 euros just for one chip. All right, hey, they come negative. Uh, polarity pointing towards the edge of a board. Now, this board has been horrible to solder and it's not being any different today. It's a very heavy copper stock this. It's a real need, a proper big soldering iron to give you the slightest chance of actually removing or soldering the component. I'm just going to take the normal iron, add a bit of solder, add a bit of heat to the board I think that one's coming off now. Yeah, that's cap number one. And we'll just uh, wiggle cap number two out uh, using manual labor because uh, the solder desoldering pump doesn't just doesn't have the pure grunt required to heat this board. However, it should have enough grunt to just melt the solder in the holes and suck that dry. And I've got a couple of fresh Nichicon. K wires to just to shove in there, so we'll put them in the hole in the right direction and solder them back in place. And 
Hopefully after that uh, the symptoms are going to be remedied. Uh, the way this amplifier acted uh, after I uh, before I did this particular repair was it would uh, turn on just fine but it would basically short the power supply out uh, through the uh, power transistor so it would just draw a shit ton of current through the MOSFETs with a very low voltage drop across them uh, causing them to not explode uh, but it would uh, after a few seconds just blow the fuse after drawing about uh, 400 watts, 500 watts of power from the grid for a while just saturating that poor transformer so there we go, caps in place let's see if this thing will run ah, oh, we can't be so hasty because those guys revive uh, at the corner of a board they uh, are actually bad too. These are 22 microfarad caps. Uh, the ESR is way over 10 ohms. Uh, one is just about 22 mic, uh, the other one's under that, in like 18 or so. So I'm going to swap those out as well. And maybe just uh, think that little guy in there is fine, and that guy hiding under there mission fine as well. So after those guys are done, yeah, we're going to try this guy out. Alright, we're zoomed into the power meter, so if this thing uh, still has the issue, uh, which it had before, it's going to draw maybe 15 watts at a peak when you turn it on, then satellite to 5 or 6 watts for a few seconds, and then jump up to stupid high levels, hundreds of watts. Uh, if it's fixed, it's probably uh, going to do the first couple of steps, but it'll go click then, and uh, drop to, may rise to maybe... Uh, 40 watts or so, something like that, is what I would expect idle power consumption of this thing. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Initial spike, drop, and it drew a kilowatt. So that's not good, this thing's not fixed. So after that I ordered a couple of replacement Class D amplifier ICs off of eBay and replaced them in the amplifier uh, to no avail. Uh, so I then had a bit of a deeper digger and I found a couple of shorted output transistors so I replaced the whole lot and that still wouldn't make it run. And uh, at this point I was starting to get a bit confused because when I applied power straight to the capacitors on the board the amplifier seemed to kind of work. You could you could make out a sound coming from it. So then it struck me. The speaker and the transformer power connectors are the same. And wouldn't you know it that the tech previously working on this thing who took the amplifier out had gotten them confused. See, I hadn't even considered the speakers plugs were, were installed with a connector for who were soldered in, so I hadn't paid any mind. And indeed, swap the speaker and transformer logs around, and the bloody things start playing music like new. I've got no idea how long this has been working perfectly, but uh, that has been the main issue for probably quite a few hours of troubleshooting. So that just goes to show that you simply cannot trust what the previous guy did. It is a golden rule of thumb which you just cannot stray from unless you want to find yourself in a scenario like this. Anything that you're not the first guy to touch, you better make sure you act like it. So, with that, we finally have ourselves a working amplifier module. And if we just flick the switch on the back, it turns on and I've run out to test music, but that's not to worry because it's not drawing more than 17 watts from a grid sitting right. And it's playing music just fine out of a test speaker. Well, that's going to explode. So, that pretty much sums it up for this thing. Uh, I'm not sure for how long I've actually been chasing. Uh, something which wasn't actually the fault since I I I I just assumed that the plugs were installed the correct way around, so I really don't know what's actually fixed this thing. Could be it was fine all along. The class D amplifier I see was fine. The previous outputs they were fine. Hmm. It could though be that all the bad caps found all around the unit 
were actually causing some issues and uh, had caused it to uh, work incorrectly. I believe the original symptom this thing had uh, prior to the first guy having a look at it was it was screeching and making horrible noises and that sounds exactly like a 7800 series regulator oscillating due to insufficient output decoupling. So I'm gonna make my diagnosis that the original fault was a couple of caps right there by the linear regs. That's what I think caused this whole ruckus and ultimately landed the subwoofer here. And everything after that has been due to whatever previous tech was on this, swapping those leads around. Oh. So that's that's a journey for sure. So I'm going to have to thank you for watching and uh, make sure you enjoy yourself.